Hey there, students and church family and, and guests, if you're tuning in. Uh, so excited to, to be with you again today um, as we continue our walk through Colossians. Um, uh, I want to start us off first with a, a word of prayer. So you pray with me. Father, we love you. God, we are so thankful for your word, for it is truth. Lord, you sanctify us in your truth. God, uh, you comfort us in your truth. And God, as we uh, face uncertain times, as time, this, these days may be scary to us, or uh, not knowing what's going on, Lord, and, and being distant from family and friends and, and just a normal day of life, God, we just we trust you. God, we, we're thankful that through your word uh, that we can cling to the promises that you uh, work all things together for good to those who love you and call it according to your purposes. Um, and God, we can just trust that you are faithful to us. God, when everything around us seems chaotic and, uh, and crazy, God, you are, you are still on the throne. Lord, you are still sovereign. Lord, you still reign supreme over all things, over all creation, over all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to you, Jesus. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. So last week, um, we discussed about living fearless in times of uncertainty and the need to place Jesus first in order for us to live fearless. And we're going we're gonna to continue to pick up with that through, through Colossians as we, as we pick up in chapter 2. Again, it's not going to be a verse-by-verse a verse exposition, but just kind of an overall, hopefully just an overall theme uh, for us as, as we look at living fearless um, in, in, in today's time. Um, so I believe uh, that the theme of Colossians is summed up as Jesus is preeminent. That is, Jesus is first. He should be first in our life. Um, he should be first place in your life. And living fearless begins with this truth. God, Jesus has to, has to be first in our life in order for us to be a people who live fearlessly for Him, for Jesus. To be a church that lives fearless in, in, in our, our day and age. But living fearlessly also has to surrender to this truth as well. Jesus is supreme. Now he is he is preeminent, he is first, he but he is also supreme. He is sovereign. He holds all authority, rule and power over heaven and earth. Uh, remember the words of Jesus in Matthew 28:18 says all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. All authority has been given over to Jesus in heaven and on, on and on earth. So that's the truth that we as the body of Christ as a church, we should remember that Jesus is supreme. We listen to the wisdom of Jesus and uh, not the wisdom of the world. And so f- because of that truth, because He is sovereign, he, uh, he, he has all authority and rule over everything, um, we need not fear. That, that means that we as the people of God, we can go and live fearlessly, um, especially when everything is going on as it is. It's so chaotic. He is supreme, and He holds all wisdom and authority and power. And when we truly believe this, we will keep pursuing spiritual growth. We will continue to, to pursue spiritual progress in Him. So we, we either drift back in our faith, or we, we, or we either progress, we push forward in our faith. There is no uh, just stag, stagnant, being stagnant in our faith. It's only you'll either be drifting back or you'll be pressing forward. Paul sums it up this way in Philippians 3, 13 and 14. Brethren, I do not regard myself as having laid hold of it yet, but one thing I do. Forgetting what lies behind and reaching forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. So our spiritual maturity is not stagnant, it is moving forward. So if we are not moving forward in our spiritual maturity, we give the enemy an opportunity, to, an opportunity to deceive us and drive us to fear. If we want to live fearless, we must press on to spiritual maturity in Christ. So let's look at Colossians 2. Colossians 2 starting in verse 1. It says, For I want you to know how greatly I'm struggling for you, for those in Laodicea and for all who have not seen me in person. I want their hearts to be encouraged and joined together in love so that they may have all the riches of complete understanding and have the knowledge of God's mystery, Christ. In Him are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. 
I'm saying this so that no one will deceive you with arguments that sound reasonable. For I may be absent in body, but I'm with you in spirit, rejoicing to see how well ordered you are and in the strength of your faith in Christ. So then, just as you have received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live in Him, being rooted and built up in Him and established in the faith, just as you were taught and overflowing with gratitude. So in these few verses, Paul uses several terms that paint a picture of how we as, as the body of Christ can make spiritual progress. We can grow spiritually and that we can live fearless uh, today. Uh, he, he uses a term that, uh, that brings the picture of a soldier. Uh, the words well-ordered and strength are military terms. It, uh, they described an army that was united against the enemy. And what, what uh, a greater words for the church to have right there is to be well-ordered and to be strong in Him to, because we are, are the body of Christ and we are united on this mission to go and to make disciples of all nations. There is a battle. There, uh, there is a battle for the hearts and the minds of every person on earth. And these, 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 these terms, well-ordered, uh, and, and, and strength give us a military term. Well ordered, describe the orderly array of soldiers with the line being unbroken and in their proper place. So God has given every member uh, in, in, our, in the church an assigned responsibility. He's given each person a gift to be used for the glory of Jesus. Strength or stability gives the picture of soldiers in battle formation with a solid or strong front against the enemy. So what made them so well ordered and what made them so strong? Um, I believe it could be summed up in two things. It's they were being joined together or literally stitched together in love. For this church to be united, they, they loved one another. They were joined together in love. And then secondly, they had a firm foundation their faith in Christ. Verse 5, For I may be absent in body, but I'm with you in spirit, rejoicing to see how well ordered you are and the strength of your faith in Christ. We are to be like soldiers on the battlefield, making progress in discipline and obedience. And when we do so, we can live fearlessly. Paul also paints a picture of a journey. If we look... Um, Look on in verse 6, it says, So then, just as you have received Christ, Jesus as Lord, continue to live in Him or uh, to continue to walk in Him. It's, just, it's a reminder to us that, that we are on a, a spiritual journey. We are just passing through earth on our, uh, on our way to our heavenly home uh, with Christ. Paul says uh, to us in verse 6, verse 6, to walk in Him, to live in Him, to lead a life in Him. We believed in Christ by faith, so we continue to walk by Him in faith as well. And this is the greatest way for us, one of the greatest ways for us to make spiritual progress is to, to continue just to walk in Christ. We believed in Him, so let's walk in Him. Thirdly, Paul paints a picture of a tree. Um, he says in verse 7, being rooted in Him, being rooted and built up in Him, just, just as a tree is rooted in the soul, we are rooted in Christ, and so there's no other need for us to draw spiritual nourishment from anything or anyone else but Christ. He is the only source that we are to draw this spiritual nourishment from. And Psalms 1 portrays this image for us. It says, How blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He will be like a tree firmly planted by streams of water which yields its fruit in its season and its leaf does not wither and in whatever he does, he prospers. Jesus says in John 15, 5, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, he bears much fruit. And for us to make spiritual progress and spiritual growth in our life, uh, Paul paints that picture of a tree, uh, of a tree being rooted deep into the, into the soil, deep into the ground to seek nourishment. And so we, as uh, the people of God, we dig deep into the Word of God, and that's where we find our spiritual nourishment. A study published by Lifeway Research found that Bible intake, or reading the Bible, is the number one spiritual marker for all other spiritual disciplines. In other words, when we read the Bible, uh, we, we, we 
tend, had the tendency to better evangelize. When we read the Bible, we, we make more disciples. When we read the Bible, we serve more. When we read the Bible, we give more. And so on and so on. When we read the Bible, it leads to spiritual growth. And so that's what Paul is painting this picture here. To be rooted in Christ means to, to plant your roots in the Word of God, to dig deep into the Word of God, to find nourishment. And that's where we receive all the wisdom and knowledge that we need to walk as a, as a believer and to live fearless. And then he paints this picture of a building. He says, being built up, Ephesians 2, 21 and 22 uh, clarify this for us. It says, In Him the whole building being put together grows into a holy temple in the Lord. In Him you are also being built together for God's dwelling in the Spirit. So we, when we are rooted in His Word, He builds us up. He keeps adding to the temple. That's what that word uh, being built up means, uh, adding layer after layer after layer after layer. And that's what Christ is doing. When we are sitting here being nursed on His Word, He continues to add to us through His Holy Spirit, to, to, to grow us into, more, into to looking more like Jesus. Jesus promotes the spiritual growth in us. Next, Paul paints a picture of a school. It says, just as you were taught, Epaphras came and he taught the people uh, of, of, Colossa, of Colossae. He taught the Colossian church the gospel and what the Word of God says. And, and so Paul was reminding of that. Just, just as you were taught... Can, be established in that, being rooted and built up in Him, and established in the faith, just as you were taught. So when we are in the Word of God, we become established in the faith. And what this means is Satan has a difficult time deceiving people who are in the Word of God. The more we study the Word of God, the more we are listening to, to God speak, uh, the more that we grow spiritually, and the harder uh, the more, more difficult time it ha- that Satan has in deceiving us and to leading us astray and to driving fear into our hearts. And then lastly, Paul paints a picture of a river. He says, overflowing with gratitude. This picture, this is a picture of a, a river that is just, it, it continues to flow and it gets wider and deeper the, the further you go down this, this river. But it's, a, a, as a Christian, that is, that is maturing spiritually, we, we overflow with gratitude of God because what He's done for us in Christ. And then one of the last things I want to point out to you is this, is God's fullness, God's fullness dwells in all Christians. If you look at verses 9 and 10 in Colossians 2, it says this, for the entire fullness of God's nature dwells bodily in Christ. And listen, and you have been filled by Him who is the head over every ruler and authority. Jesus is supreme. But Jesus also fills you with His Holy Spirit. The fullness of God dwelled bodily in Christ, and then Christ fills you with His Holy Spirit. So when you place faith in Jesus, He sends His Holy Spirit to dwell in you. And the Holy Spirit comes to help you walk in him. And so if you're listening, if you're listening today and and, and you're not you're not a believer, you're not a Christian, you, you don't you you've never ta- taken that step of faith in Christ, I urge you and I and I, and I, I encourage you to reach out to to a to a staff member on this church. Uh, send us a message or or give our church a call and we love to tell you what Jesus has done for you through through uh, his death, burial, and resurrection, what He accomplished for you. And so, I want to leave you a little application. I want to give you a little challenge. I want you to go through, I want you to read Colossians 2. And as you read Colossians 2, I want you to mark any phrases that say, in Christ, or in Him, or with Him, by Him, for Him. Mark these words, and then write out um, what you find out by marking those words. And so that is my challenge for you. And so as we close, I want you to remember, we remain well-ordered and strong in our faith in Christ. We walk by faith. We remain rooted and built up in Him. We stay in His Word. We overflow with gratitude. And by looking at these pictures of spiritual progress and spiritual growth, we see how the Christian can easily defeat the schemes of the enemy and follow Jesus faithfully and fearlessly. Love you guys. Long, long, long for you. Hope to see you soon.